Hi, I'm Jan, and in this video we're going to be using machine learning to build a system that can recognize and track multiple objects through a camera, a task known as object detection. Um, and then after that we're going to be deploying that model back to an embedded device so it can actually do this object detection in real time. Um, and adding sight to your sensors is super cool because it allows you to build devices that can see the difference between poachers and elephants, um, count objects or even find your Lego bricks, um, or detect dangerous situations on a factory floor. Um, so today we're going to be building such a system completely from scratch. There's no pre-trained models here. We're going to be collecting data, training that model, and then deploying that back. Um, so what do we need? Um, here um, I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi, but we have a wide variety of other fully supported um, development kits. I'll put a link down below here. Um, and naturally, we need a camera. Here I'm using a standard Logitech webcam. Um, so one remark here, um, tracking multiple objects is incredibly resource intensive. So if you only need to track a single object or detect a single object, am I seeing a lamp or a piano? That's the question. Then actually see your tutorial on image classification. Um, this runs a lot faster and actually runs on really small devices like your typical Arduino or even specialized DSPs like this Hi-Max WEI Plus dev board. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started. So here I have an empty Edge Impulse project and Edge Impulse is uh, founded by engineers, um, including me, um, to really help embedded developers build machine learning projects and really put machine learning as a new tool in your toolbox as an embedded developer. So we'll help you collect data, get insight in that data through signal processing or machine learning, and then help you deploy that model back to your edge devices. So these models that we, that we create here can be incredibly small, or it can be a lot bigger, which is what we're going to be doing here with our object detection use case. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is actually select the type of project that we're going to be building. Um, you can see we do accelerometer data, audio images, or even something completely different, anything from environmental sensors to radar. Um, here we're going to be building an image model. And we want to classify multiple objects. And this presets our project with our object detection workflow. Um, let's get started. So to connect my development board to Edge Impulse, I shell into my Raspberry Pi. I don't have a screen hooked up, but you can use this as well from the terminal um, in Raspbian. I'll log in here, and then I'll run the Edge Impulse Linux command to enable this device. And I'll want to do it to a new project, so I'll run it with dash dash clean. And connect to the object action video project, and now I can select um, my audio input, which is going to be my webcam. And it's also using my webcam as a camera, and I'll give it a name. So now my device is connected. This is not the only way of getting data in. Um, if you have a fully connected development board, there's always a whole flow actually explaining how you can connect it into Edge Impulse, but you can also use your mobile phone. Um, just go to let's collect some data, click show QR code and scan it from your phone, and you can collect data straight from there, or even upload data if you already have something by clicking here, go to the uploader. So under devices, I now have my Raspberry Pi listed here. Um, and it has two sensors, both a microphone and a camera. If you have different data that you wanna um, collect from your dev board, there's tutorials um, in a wide variety of languages on how to do that on the docs page. Um, but let's go to data acquisition. Um, so at this point, I do not have any data and that's going to be the very first task um, of building this system. First thing to determine, what do we actually want to detect? So my suggestion here, pick two objects that you have in your living room. Um, I have on my right side here, you can't see it on the video, but we'll show it in a sec, um, a lamp. And on my desk, I have a cup of coffee. Um, these are the two things that I'd like to detect. So for that, I need photos of both a lamp and a cup of coffee. Um, because we're going to be doing object detection, I can actually have the same object in, in the frame, uh, or I can have both of these objects um, in the frame. Um, but I might want to have a few or actually zoom in on the lamp um, and get some of those details to make sure that the ML model will actually work well after we deploy this back to the device. So um, I select my sensor here, I'll use the camera, and now you see my lamp, and here's my hand, 
So we have a really cool um, live feed of the camera, even if your Raspberry Pi doesn't have um, a camera or uh, doesn't have a screen attached. So I'll set a label. It doesn't really matter because we're going to be, after this, we're going to be actually drawing boxes around these objects um, to track that. Um, I'll position this, my webcam, nicely. So I'll have the lamp and the coffee cup actually in the frame. So there we go. So that's a lamp and a coffee cup. Um, now, I need quite a lot of data, not an insane amount, but my suggestion here to build this model is to capture around 30 photos of each object. So as said, these can be in the same frame, um, like we have here, and I can move my cup around a little bit. So this counts basically as one for lamp and one for, for coffee. Um, but try to vary a little bit in what you capture. Zoom in on the object, make sure you get it from all the angles, because having a quality data set is really going to make the difference between a well-working and a not-working ML model. So I'm going to collect these 30 photos and I'll be back in just a little bit. All right, here we are again. Um, I have collected actually 50 photos of both my lamp and my coffee cup. Um, so I can click through that a little bit here. You'll see here my lamp. Here's a bunch of photos with both of them actually in the frame. Actually a lot of them. Um, and some from a couple of different angles and, and zoom levels. So really great, we have our data set. Now, to evaluate whether an ML model works well, we want to have we want to keep some of the data that we collected aside in a test set, um, and not use that to actually train the model. So after that, we can take the data in the test set, let the model classify it, and then actually get an evaluation of how well the model works. Um, so if you use your mobile phone, this is done automatically, um, but that's not the case here. So if that's not the case, and you have lots of data in your training set and no data in your test set, which we have here, you can go to your dashboard and actually click rebalance data set. And now this is split about 80-20, split between your training set and your testing set. Great. So next, let's label this data. So for that, you can go to the labeling queue and that will list all the photos that we collected um, with a nice interface to actually draw boxes around it. So here, I'll just go and label it. And here's my lamp. Now, we do something really cool and we run a large neural network in the background that will try and keep track of these objects between photos to help you assist with labeling. So I've labeled these two objects, I click Save Labels, and it automatically saw that the coffee cup actually moved over the table or over my desk, and it already uh, labeled the coffee cup again, which is really great because this saves you a lot of time actually um, during this labeling phase. And there we go. So I'm gonna go through this and actually label all of this data, and I'll see you in a sec. So all of our labels have now, all of our data has now been labeled. Um, so if we go to training data, I'll see that I have 27 photos of a lamp in my training set and 35 um, of, a of, a, of a coffee cup. And if I want to see the labels, I can just click on these items. Or if I want to change them, just click Edit Labels. and well, you get the same interface back. And you can move it around a little bit. So this looks great. Let's go build a model. So to do that, we go to the Create Impulse screen. And an impulse is something where we take raw data, normalize it. Here, we're going to be actually creating a 320 by 320 photo out of this. Um, so we're going to cut the sides off. Um, resize the 320 by 320 pixels. Um, then we're going to be add a processing block. Um, here is just an image block that passes through, but you can add some custom um, CV codes, computer vision code, like maybe you want to find the face first as a pre-processing step. And then we're going to be adding a learning block. And a learning block will then take that data and then train something. In essence, find a really large formula that best maps these inputs to the two outputs that we want. Um, and after that, we'll have a trained model that we can then use to actually validate and see how well our model works. So let's save that. Um, so our image model, um, we're not going to do a lot of pre-processing. Um, literally anything we can set we, we set here is just the color depth here should be RGB. 
But then we can go to generate features. And this gives you a really quick insight in your data set quality because we go over all the data in your data set. Um, and then we're going to create a visualization of that data set. Um, and from that, you can kind of see how well your data separates. So if you have mislabeled items in here, for example, I accidentally labeled my lamp a coffee cup, you can see that because the cluster of data, the cluster of, of lamp data, uh, or the cluster of coffee data will actually have something that doesn't fit in there. Um, let me run this and get back to you. All right, so this process is now done and we see all of our data visualized. And you see that the data separates really nicely. We have all the photos of a lamp here and we have all the photos of the coffee cup here. So this is a good indication that our ML model is going to at least distinguish between a lamp and a coffee cup quite nicely. If you want to get more information on one of these things, you can just click on it and we'll actually show you the exact item that was responsible here. So with that data, we're going to be training a transfer learning model. Now the one thing that kind of all image models need to do in the first layers of a neural network, kind of the, the large mathematical formula that best maps inputs to outputs, is learn very similar things, like what is contrast? What are shapes? What is kind of color difference that I, that I see in here? So to make this easier for you as a developer, we have a pre-trained model, a large pre-trained model in lots of different classes. Then we're going to strip the top layers of the network the ones that are actually going to distinguish between these objects off and retrain it with your own data. This is a really cool and nifty little trick which allows you to build these types of models with very little data. The 50 photos that we have normally here are normally never enough to actually build a well-working object detection system. Um, but because our task is relatively narrow, my house has not a lot of objects in it, as you can see, um, and we have a pretty hyper-localized problem here, we can do this with little data, we're just using a transfer learning model, which I think is really cool. Um, the defaults here are fine, but we'll have different sizes of models available depending on the type of hardware that you need to run on. But the default model will actually run fine on a Raspberry Pi with a few frames a second, which is good enough for, for this point. So for this, I'll just click start training and we'll let this run for a few minutes and then we'll have a trained model that we can, that we can then evaluate. Right, we're a little bit later and our model is now trained up. Um, so what we show here is actually the precision score. So how well did the model predict the bounding boxes that we added earlier? Um, and how much did they match actually what we drew up? Um, we also show the on-device performance. So that's mostly here the size of the model. Um, typically we generate multiple model versions. So both a quantized one and an unoptimized one. Um, Typically, the unoptimized model works a little bit better, but it uses a lot more ROM and will also run um, a bit slower on your device. So the right choice um, is up to you. So let's actually see if this model works nicely. So as you remember, we kept about 20% of our data aside during um, training. And that data we can now use to actually validate whether our model works nicely. Um, so for every single one of these items, you'll see it here, we go over the data, we look at the precision score, so how well did the bounding box that the model predicts actually overlaps with the one that we drew. And from there, we can actually determine an accuracy score over our test set. So this is data that the model has never seen before. It's very, so that's great. We actually see that we score 88% accuracy, which is pretty good. Um, and except for this one, the model is very good at predicting all of this. If you want to go into one of these samples, um, for example, see what the model predicted here, click show classification, and this takes you to the live classification page. And from here, you can actually see um, exactly what the model predicted. So we have our lamp here, and the model predicted actually two bounding boxes, but they overlap. So we'll count this one um, of the lamp here. That's the bigger one. And it actually picked up on a little piece of the lamp as well as a good indication that apparently this is a lamp. So this is pretty good. Um, we also have our live camera feed still here from the Pi, and we can use that to um, see if the model can actually predict completely new situations straight from there. So let's actually put my coffee cup here, click start sampling. We now snap a photo on the Pi, send it to Edge Impulse, and then run the classification pipeline here. And it thought this was a coffee cup with 0.91 um, um, confidence, which is awesome. 
This is really great. Um, if you, after this, think, hey, this is very useful, I want to keep this sample in my um, test set, go to Show in Data Acquisition, Edit Labels, and just drag a label around it. Cool, and now we have this item available in model testing as well. So this is cool. We've built a model really quickly. We collected data. We verified that the model seems to work. Now it's time to actually run this on our um, device itself. So in this impulse, you can deploy to a very wide variety of targets. So our most used export method is just a C++ library that gives you everything, all your signal processing code, all your machine learning code, everything in one um, zip file that you can then compile with any C++ compiler. Um, this is great, really easy to integrate into your firmware if your application is in C++. Um, but for uh, Linux-based systems, we now also have SDKs in Node.js, Python, and Go. So if you want to write your application in a higher level language, you can do that in one of those um, in one of those languages. Um, so for that, though, we need a model file. And that model file, in essence, is a compiled down version of the C++ library that you can then talk to from your higher level language. Um, how do we generate that? Well, that's the cool part. So to see this now running on the, um, at least on Raspberry Pi here, I can stop the Linux tool that was previously sampling data. And now I can just run at Impulse Linux runner. So this will compile a binary, compile the full model for the target hardware, so for the Raspberry Pi here. And we're going to be using full hardware acceleration on the target. So here we know that we're running on an ARM V7 um, uh, MPU, and that means that we can use NEO instructions. Um, and if we run on a, a Jetson Nano, we will use the GPU underneath. Um, so that's really great. So we can build our model automatically for your target hardware and then make it available on the Pi here. So you'll see actually the cross compiler um, running right now in a impulse. And after that, we can run this model directly on the Pi and it doesn't need any internet connection anymore. Um, and this Pi can now actually see where these objects are. Um, and really, and you as a developer can start building applications that take advantage of that. For example, if I see both, if I see a coffee cup here, I can send myself a text message using Twilio or a different service. Or if I'm building a system that can detect elephants, for example, on the savannah, I can build a simple system that says, well, if I see an elephant where there shouldn't be one, or I see both an elephant and a poacher in the same frame, then I want to send a message to a ranger um, and actually alert someone. It's really cool. So this actually, um, the model is built and it's now running on my Pi. And you can see that there's a, um, actually the bounding boxes here are visible. So it's currently seeing a coffee cup right in front of it. And that's correct because we didn't move this. If you're on the same network, we have a really cool nifty little trick to actually help you um, uh, debug these types of models because we have a URL here. And this URL runs on the Pi but it opens up a web interface to actually see what the Pi is seeing. So let's open that up. And there we go. This is currently what the Pi is seeing. And it thinks it's seeing a coffee cup. And let's actually, and there we go, not seeing a lamp. And let's actually see if it can see both of these things in one frame. There's a bit of delay in here. There we go, coffee cup and lamp, both in one frame. Really, really cool. Um, so naturally the interesting part um, gets here when you wanna develop your own application that uses this. Um, and as said, for that we have released new SDKs in high level languages that allow you to do this type of thing. Um, so let's you know, go take a look at one of those examples. Um, if you wanna see all the API documentation or the SDK documentation, go to our docs page, find Edge Impulse for Linux, and you have links to all the SDKs there. All right, so here I have a small example um, that shows you how easy it is to integrate this into your own application. Um, so this is the Node.js SDK. Um, I have an image classifier, and that image classifier gets data from the camera and then classifies that against the model that we just created. And I can just check. Um, I can go through all the bounding boxes 
and actually build a model that says, well, if I cannot find a box that says coffee, and it has been the case in the last 10 seconds, so since the last time that I've seen coffee is 10 seconds ago, that is a very dangerous situation. I now want to send a message over Twilio that something is happening. So with just a few lines of code, you can take the model that you, that you built, integrate it into your own application and make it do something very useful. Um, so let's go to the Pi. And the first thing that I need is to download the model file, the one that we just built. So I can run the Edge Impulse Linux runner, but now with a download flag, And this will just get the same model and I'll write it to disk. And now I can run this example. Um, and I need to pass in the camera name. So that's the C922 Pro. There we go, starting. Connect to the camera um, and also here we have a basic web interface to help us debug some of this stuff. Running on a different port now. So right now, coffee is here, nothing is going on. But now I actually want to take a sip. And in about 10 seconds, actually, the model should detect this and send us a message over Twilio. There we go, danger. Coffee is gone. And I hope you guys can see this on the, there we go. A message actually on my phone from Twilio stating that. So really cool, really easy to build. And there we go. Now this message is gone because the coffee cup um, is where it should be. And that's it. I hope that in this video, you've learned how you can actually build your own object detection model. Um, I hope it inspires you to actually start thinking about all the type of things that your devices could see, feel, or hear that we currently don't act upon. And Edge Impulse is here, it's the engineering tool to help you build these types of models, to take sensor data in and get conclusions out. So rather than just buying an off-the-shelf sensor that can get the temperature, now you can actually use the senses of, of a Raspberry Pi or a different development board to really, really understand the world. And that excites me a lot. So I hope that um, some of that will actually be transported to you straight through the screen and would love to see what you're going to be building with this. And if you have something cool, please share it with us. We can't wait to see what you'll build.